Texas A&M wide receiver Evan Stewart is going to have more than 1,000 yards receiving this season. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in the Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get bold today. We're going to get bold. We're going to do it. I'm going to give you nine bold predictions for this 2023 football season for the Aggies. First little note before I get into why, telling you why Evan Stewart's going to have a 1,000 receiving yards this year. Everybody in the comments, tell me a bold prediction. In the YouTube comments, if you're, if you're listening on another platform, listening on, on a podcast platform, head over to YouTube in the comments and leave your bold prediction for the season right there. But our first bold prediction is that Evan Stewart will be in a 1,000-yard receiver this season. This is something I've kind of teeter-tottered back and forth on just due to the fact that I think the talent of this wide receiver room is going to hold him back a little bit. So, you know, and, and I've argued that. I've said, like, I think Evan Stewart's one of the best receivers in the SEC, but is the talent of Moose and Anaya Smith and Noah Thomas going to hold back what Evan Stewart's upside is? I've gone back and forth. There's one quote from Coach Petrino that has sold me on the flip side of this. And it's the, he loves it, feed your studs. I think that right there says all you need to say. As good as Anaya Smith is, as good as Moose is, as good as Noah Thomas is, Evan Stewart's the best receiver on this team. I think Evan Stewart's one of the best players on this team as a whole. I think he's one of the best receivers in college football. So you have to get the ball in his hands a lot. He needs, I think, 10 targets a game. I mean, I, I think you have to feed him the ball, let him win 50-50 balls, run crisp routes, make people miss, make him do the things he's capable of doing, which is going to lead to touchdowns and yards. So I've gone back and forth on it. At first, like I said, I, I've changed my opinion on this. At first, I kind of leaned towards – He's going to have a good season, but it's going to be in like the 700-yard um, area just because of how good these other players are. I think that he's going to have 1,000 yards. I, I just I, – I th the way I look at that is, okay, you play 12 games. Uh, now, you know, we'll count the bowl game, of course, in it too. But, I mean, let's, let's, we'll, we'll do, let's do the math on it. Let's do the exact math on it because I don't know. It, 1,000 yards because, you know, it doesn't happen a crazy amount in college anymore. Um, so like, let's do, so 12 games, th we'll say 13 with the bowl game divided by a thousand yards. Okay. Well, that wasn't right. Sorry. A thousand yards divided by 13 games is 76 yards a game. If Evan Stewart can average 76 yards a game, he will surpass a thousand yards. I think you're going to see that from him. I mean, here's the deal. If this offense passes for 300 plus yards, you know, I, who, I don't think anyone would be a game. Anyone, no one would be surprised if Evan Stewart averaged, uh, averaged 76 yards a game. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that one bit. Now, will this offense average 300 yards a game uh, uh, through the air? I mean, I don't, it, it'll be interesting. I think you're going to see a lot of balance uh, between the run game and the pass game. But this bold prediction, I'm betting on talent. And that's what Coach Petrino's talked about doing. He's betting on talent because he wants to feed the studs. I'm betting on talent. I think Evan Stewart's in the 1,000-yard receiver. Um, I think that of the bold takes we have here, I don't know how bold it is. I mean, I, I think that, like I said, I think 1,000 yards receiving, a lot of people look at that and go, oh, there's no way. You know, it's a big number. And then you break it down. It's like, I mean, Evan Stewart is going to have a lot of games where he has over 100 yards receiving. He has games like that. That'll buffer the games where you have 54 yards receiving. You know, I think it's a back and forth. 
Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he did it. Now, that still could be – I'm basing this off the feed your studs from Coach Petrino. Now, here's the deal. Anias and Moose and Noah Thomas are still studs. They're still going to need to get the football. They're going to have to do the things – you know, we know Noah Thomas is a big guy. He can win the 50-50 ball. He can score for you in the red zone. Anias is electric with the football in his hands. Each of these players has stuff that they do well, and you're going to have to kind of find ways to get them the football. But Evan Stewart's your number one option, and I think you're going to see that play out this season. So, yes, my opinion's changed on this matter. Um, so that's bold take number one. I think Evan Stewart um, is an 1,000-yard receiver for the Aggies this season. Ruben Owens leads the team in rushing is my second one. Those of you everydayers who listen at Locked on Aggies on a day-to-day -day basis know that I think Ruben Owens is going to be an absolute monster for the Aggies this season. Um, I don't, and that's the funny thing about it. I don't think he starts the season as the guy. I think you're, it, it I, I really, there's a chance he starts the season as third on the depth chart. Now, I've talked about it, regardless of what the depth chart looks like, He's going to get his carries. All these guys are going to get their carries. I'm not concerned about that. We know everybody's going to eat. I've talked about how Coach Petrino is going to kind of handle that. Everybody's going to eat, but I think Ruben Owens takes over as the guy, which I've talked about this numerous times here on Locked on Aggies. I think that whoever is the guy isn't going to be like what Devon A. Chain was last season. He's not going to be, you know, uh, that many carries a game type of player, but I still think that a guy takes over and gets a bulk of the carry. So, like, we're going to see, like, 16 carries to, compared to five and seven. Like, there's going to be someone who everyone's going to get some carries, but I think you're going to see the guy get substantially more. And I think Ruben Owens will take that over. Will it be week one? Will it be week two? I don't know. But I think it'll be early on into the season, and I think when the season is over, Ruben Owens leads this team in rushing, you know, I've seen some people on Twitter today talking about, hey, just give him the keys. Let him do his thing. So I think that we're going to see that kind of play out. I think Ruben Owens is going to is going to take over. They're going to give him the give him the reins to the to the uh, running back room, and he's going to take over. And I think he's going to receive some serious postseason accolades after the numbers he's going to put up for the Aggies this season. And then whatever he does this year, goodness gracious, look out. For 2024, I mean, that is going to just be scary to know what he's going to do his second year in College Station playing for the Aggies. My third bold take, and this is a big one. This is a big one. Massive one. I think the offensive line is going to dominate. There's a couple things I don't love. Bryce Foster. Now, when I say, you know, Bryce Foster and Ruben Fothery, they're both banged up. All reports say they're going to be back and good to go for week one against New Mexico. But I don't – it's kind of like how I talked about when I misread that um, – um, the quote on Trey's Dune where I thought they were talking about he was banged up. He's he's not completely healthy. Um, but when I misread that and was like, I don't want to hear players banged up going into the season. So Bryce Foster and Ru Ruben Fothery, they're, they're going to be good to go. They're going to be fine. Um, that's everything we're hearing. But you just don't like seeing it. You don't like, see, you don't like seeing people being held out of practices and scrimmages. I don't, I don't like that. But beside the point – I think this offensive line dominates. It, they, they're big guys. They've all added the right weight, lost the right, you know, put on the good weight, take off the bad weight. Everybody looks to be in great shape physically. Bryce Foster, I think, is one of the best centers in college football. Fawthry is a massive, massive human being. I like your guards. I like, I think Trey Zoon, Trey Zoon I'd say, is the biggest concern for me, but – I'm going to be honest, I just like the swagger and the confidence he carried himself with when he was in that um, on the podium speaking to the media. He just seemed like he was ready to play some football. So this is a bold take, um, you know, based on just what we've heard. It's one of those things, like some of these bold takes I can make off like actual observations. This one is just what we've heard. I mean, what I've heard is this offensive line is going to dominate. If this offensive line dominates, then this offense is going to dominate. If this offensive line, it all starts up front. I, someone was talking about that in the comments uh, yesterday. It all starts up front. This is no secret. We know that. If you're not succeeding up front, it's hard to win football games on both sides of the ball. So Texas A&M's offensive line has to push people around, has to give Wigman time, has to block for the running backs, has to do all the right things 
to help this Texas A&M football team win games. And if they don't, if they don't dominate, like I said, I think it could lead to struggles for this Texas A&M football team. That's my thoughts here. And I, you know, I just, this offensive line has to be good. If this Texas A&M football team wants to be good, this offensive line has to be good. And my bold prediction is it's going to be dominant, one of the better offensive lines in the SEC, and that is going to be one of the biggest reasons for the turnaround of this Texas A&M football team in 2023. We're going to talk about Connor Wigman and why I think he might be in the Heisman conversation midway through the season. We'll talk about that. Coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I have got to give a shout out to the best clothing brand in the world, Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are the most comfortable pair of pants, pair of shorts. I now have a pair of long pants and three pairs of shorts. And my goodness, they are comfortable. They feel good. They look good. Wore them out on the town the other day. You just feel good. I mean, they, they they make your legs look good. You look you look put together. You look you, you know you look like you got big old strong legs, which is deceiving, but deceiving in the right way for this guy. Love bird dogs. Like I said, I mean, truly, they feel good. They look good. My roommate Cameron just bought bird dogs the other day because I told him I've been hounding my buddies. I said you've got to buy bird dogs. He bought them, his box sitting over there by his room. He just got done and he wore them for a day. He bought a couple shirts as well and talked about how. It is just the most comfortable thing he has ever owned in his entire life. You have got to check out Bird Dogs. I promise it is worth it. They are the best pants I've ever worn. I'm going to have to get the shirt, the shirt, um, some shirts because they're just awesome. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college or promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. We're getting bold. We're staying bold, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be bold all day here on Locked on Aggies. Connor Wigman is going to be in the Heisman race midway through the season. Will he finish the year in the Heisman race? I don't think so. But this is the, and, and I'm, like I said, I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to make my case. Those of you listening, if I'm crazy, you tell me I appreciate it. That's completely fine. But you look at the start to the season. You're going to beat down on New Mexico. You play Miami. You're going to beat down on Louisiana Monroe. You play Auburn. You play Arkansas. And then the Crimson Tide are heading to town for one of the biggest games of the season. So midway through the you know, season, six games, right? And obviously, postseason would make it more the would make the season more than twelve games. But we'll, we're talking regular season right now. Six games through the year. If the Aggies are six and zero, oh, Connor Wigman is in the Heisman is in the conversation. Now, what does in the conversation mean? Does that mean like if there are ten names that you could throw out, would he be one of those names? If the Aggies are six and zero oh, and this offense is flowing, you're dang right. I think Connor Wigman's name is going to be on a Heisman watch list. Is it going to finish the year there? You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you go look at FanDuel Sportsbook, friends of the show, they have Connor Wigman. His Heisman odds are better or are not as high as you might imagine. When I first checked, I figured he was going to be like what, the eighth best quarterback in Heisman odds in the SEC. He's up there. I, I mean, do I think Connor Wigman is going to win the S? Sorry, is going to win the Heisman Trophy? No, I don't think he's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Do I think that he could be in the conversation as we get kind of further into the season? If the Aggies are off to a hot start, the offense is flowing and putting up points. Yeah, I do. I really do because I know how talented he is. We've seen the tape. We saw what he did last year. We've seen the improvements he's made. We've seen the connections he has with his receivers. I believe in Connor Wigman. I mean, we just got done talking yesterday about what Connor Wigman, about, about get on the hype train, all aboard, get on the hype train. I'm on. I am. I'm the conductor. I am the conductor of the hype train. And I'm sold. I really think Connor Wigman is going to be a guy that comes, I mean, that has a season 
mid at the midpoint that you go, wow, he has been really good for the Aggies. Now, I mean, here's the deal. Everybody has a bad game. Everybody ha- you know, has a game where they don't play their best football. I get that. So the question is, when's gonna be the when is that game gonna be for Connor Wigman? Is it gonna be the Bama game? Is it gonna be the Auburn game, the Miami game, the LSU game? Is it gonna be no games? I think that would be best case scenario. I mean, obviously, you, you don't want there to be any game that someone doesn't play their best. And I think that's what you're going to see from Connor Wickman is, I mean, you know, I mean, is he going to play perfect every game? No, but I think that he's going to be able to game manage well enough to win football games when he's not playing his best game. I think that LSU game is the prime example of why Connor Wickman can be so good. Were the stat, did the stats jump off the sheet at you? No, they weren't crazy. They weren't massive numbers. He didn't have 500 yards and seven touchdowns. They were good numbers. And he didn't make mistakes, leading to a big-time upset for the Aggies and a real high note to finish up the year. I mean, it that is the way I look at this. I think that Connor Wigman just has to be good enough. I mean, and, but here's the deal. If he starts the season red hot, averaging 303 a game, you're dang right he's going to be on some Heisman watch list. And as he should, I mean, as he should be. So this one, I think, might be – this one might be the most bold – take of all of them but I don't think it is crazy a crazy take because all it takes is Texas A&M getting off to a hot start him throwing the ball well putting up points the offense flowing well and Texas A&M winning football games if that happens he's in the conversation I mean here's the deal we've seen quarterbacks that their stats maybe aren't always that great but their team's just good they win football games in the conversation that's what that's why I think Connor Wigman will be in the conversation so conductor Conductor Stefaniak here of the SS Connor Wigman hype train all aboard. Fadil Diggs is going to have eight plus sacks this season. Talking to him at SEC media days, he just seems so confident about the pass rush that he and his teammates are going to be able to get this season. Um, He of course led the Aggies with a not great three sacks. Now he did go down, missed a handful of games with injury last year. If he stays healthy, I think this is a completely different. I think he maybe has five or six sacks. You know, with him going down with that injury, I, I get why it held back, you know, his sack amount. But I think that, you know, one that's one of the big things we've talked about as a whole. I mean, the Aggies had, let me double check on this number before I say it, but yeah, the Aggies had 20 sacks last year, which was one of the worst numbers in the SEC. I think you're going to see that improve a good amount this year just because of how much better I think the defensive line is going to be. Um, but Diggs, I mean, he just seemed confident. He seemed confident. And like last year, let's say he doesn't go down with injury and, 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 and he gets two or three more sacks. He has six sacks last year saying that he can get two more this year. I don't think is, is crazy out there. I think saying double digits would be a little crazy, but eight sacks. I think he leads the team in sacks this year. Um, eight sacks. I don't think that's too crazy for him. If he stays healthy, he's on the field, especially the big key is is racking them up in the games against your three non-conference opponents that aren't Miami, you know, against Abilene Christian and New Mexico and Louisiana Monroe. That is when you rack up these numbers. You rack up these numbers. If he's able to get four sacks in those games, you know, no doubt in my mind he gets eight sacks. So that's the key is getting a, a good amount of sacks in those games that aren't the crazy important or the crazy difficult games. So I think Fadil Diggs leads the team in sacks and has eight-plus this season for the Aggies. Walter Nolan is going to be an All-American. I think we should, you know, if if the train, the hype train had multiple, like, you know, what what are they called, the train cars, whatever, multiple of them, the second one would be the SS Walter Nolan hype train because I'm all aboard that one too. I'm not the conductor there. I'm just on board. But – Walter Nolan's going to have a massive season. We just continue to hear more and more positive things about him and what he's going to do this year. I think he's hungry. I think he's ready to to take this defensive line to the next level. He's, I mean, just a perfect frame to be a dominant force on the, on the defensive line for the Aggies this season. I think he's going to be all around. He's going to help stop the run. He's going to get tackles for loss. He's going to get after the quarterback. He's going to do everything you need a defensive lineman to do this season. 
And that's going to be another reason why I think Texas A&M takes a step forward. We talked about how important the offensive line is going to be in segment one for this offense flowing well. The defensive line being as good as we anticipate and stopping the run is going to be another massive thing for this Texas A&M defense. You got to stop the run. And I think Walsh Nolan is going to be a big part of that. If he's able to really plug up the, um, you know, be a stop the opposing teams from running, you're in business. You're in great shape. And I think you're going to see that from Walter Nolan this season. So watch out for old Walt because I think he has a real shot to be an All American for the Texas AM Aggies this year because I think he's going to be one of the best defensive linemen in college football. I'm going to talk about why Jimbo Fisher is going to be the coach of the year in the SEC this year. Coming up right here. Unlocked on Aggies. Coach Fisher, I think, has a legitimate chance to be the comeback or the or the SEC coach of the year based off of the comeback nature of the season I think the Aggies will have this year. You're 5-7 and seven last year. You're bad. You underperformed with a lot of talent. And now you have to kind of Fix that. You have to do better. And if the Aggies have the turnaround that I expect them to have this season, I think Coach Fisher is going to win SEC Coach of the Year. Now, I mean, here's the deal. So this is where you would, okay, this is where you have to ask the question. But So you win 12 games, then you win the SEC Championship. So you have to go 15-0. and 0. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. So 12 games, SEC Championship is 13 and then the original playoff championship. So you have to go 15-0 to, w- or to win the national championship. I guess you don't necessarily have to win every game. But if Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs go 15-0 and and win the national championship, or Coach Fisher leads this team to a 10-2 and season and a New Year's Six Bowl win, so you're 11-2, and I think Coach Fisher has Texas – I think he wins SE Coach of the Year just because of – Georgia was really good last year, and they're going to be really good this year. If Coach Fisher pulls off what I think he might be able to do this year for this Texas A&M football team, he's going to take a team from the bottom to the top of the SEC just like that. So, yeah, I think Coach Fisher can win the SEC Coach of the Year award if he puts together the turnaround that I anticipate for this Texas A&M football team. The Aggies are going to have six or more players on all SEC lists. I think you could have made this as bold as you wanted and said eight. I mean, there's that's how much talent's on this team. I mean, like, I'm going to list players, and and you tell me if, if, if it would be crazy for one of them to be an all-SEC player. Tariq Chappelle, Bryce Anderson, Evan Stewart, Connor Wigman, Bryce Foster. Um, did I say Walter Nolan yet? Walter Nolan, the Shamars, Fadil Diggs, if he has the amount of sacks we predict. Some of these sleepers on the defensive line. Some of these line. I mean, there are so many players. Damani Richardson. There are so many players that can be all SEC performers for the Aggies this season. And that is a reason that I and many others, I think, are high, are starting to get higher and higher on the Aggies. It's just based off, you got to remember the talent this team has. This team could have six, seven, or eight all SEC players. I don't think many people would be all that surprised. That's how deep and talented this Texas A&M football team is. So, I mean, now they have to play well on paper. We can talk about on paper how many talented players you have all day. You can talk about it all day, but at the end of the day, they're going to have to show it, perform well, do the right stuff on the field. Um, So, you know, I I see this being a – I think Texas A&M could have six-plus guys on an all-SEC list. I don't think that's by any means a crazy thought. And then our last bold take is Coach Bobby Petrino is going to win the Royals Award given to the mo- to the best assistant coach in college football. I think you could see Coach Petrino and Coach Fisher clean sweep these awards if what I said happens happens. If you go nine and three with a bowl win or ten and two with a bowl win, I think you know I think Coach Fisher is going to be the SEC Coach of the Year, and then based on that, I think Coach Petrino is going to be the um, Royals Award winner based off what he does to this offense. 
So Coach Petrino, I mean, he I think he's another, like we talked about stopping the run, and we've talked about the offensive line play. Coach Petrino being good, making good play calls, being a good signal caller for or a good play caller for the Aggies this season is going to be what make or breaks this year for Texas A&M. If he does what if we think he's going to do and you know continues to be one of the most historic college football offensive minds we've ever seen, and this Texas A&M offense goes from one of the worst to one of the best in college football as a whole slash the SEC, yeah, I think he's going to win the Brawls Award. I wouldn't be one bit surprised by that. That's how good of a coach I think he is, and I think he's also going to kind of get the benefit of the doubt based off the record the Aggies had last season. So I think you could see Coach Fisher and Coach Petrino clean sweep these awards if Texas A&M has this bounce-back season that I and many others anticipate them having in 2023. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so close to football season. It's Wednesday. Let's count it out because that's what I need on this Wednesday. I'm going to let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The Aggies have a game in ten days. I can't believe it. It's going to be a ball. We're going to—I mean, it's just—I'm stoked to bring you all some fun football content here on Locked On Aggies. We will, of course, have our game week preparation starting on Monday. We'll have, and and I'll explain on Monday like what our game um, week preparation is going to look like. What are we going to do post game? I'm going to break all that down so we we all are all on the same page for what this season is going to look like here on Locked On Aggies. And like I said, lastly, in the YouTube comments, send me your bold prediction for Texas A&M's football team this season. I'm really curious to see everybody's thoughts. So send me that. Let me know what you think in the comments on YouTube. If you're watching somewhere on um, a podcast platform, head over to the YouTube comments and let me know there. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow.